Hello and welcome back to the Grand Gales. Before we get into the episode today and figure out exactly how we're going to hold this empire together, I would like to address two comments. One was quite nice and actually I just want to go through um, some of the questions that they had. The other was quite rude and dismissive and I want to go through their bit out of a little bit of pettiness but also some people thumbs it up so I just wanted to uh, let people know what the actual mechanics are in Crusader Kings 3 because obviously it's something that people are getting mixed up with. So let's start with that one. So what they said is they said fame is prestige in Crusader Kings 3. This is not the case. Fame and Prestige are both in Crusader Kings 3, and in fact, they are um, different systems that interlock. Prestige is the uh, value and the resource that you can spend. It's the one that you spend on succession laws. It's the one that you spend on cultural traits. It's the one you spend to the clear war. All of that is under Prestige's banner. Fame is another stat that you get as you gain Prestige. So as you gain more Prestige, you gain more Fame. And this leads you into this level of fame mechanic, which gives you distinguished, illustrious, exalted amongst men, and you see you get secular opinion number of knights. Now, the reason why it was brought up is because when I was declaring wars and going into battle, I was expecting to gain some prestige for it, because that's the mechanic in Crusader Kings 2. As it turns out, they've actually moved that over to fame in this game, and it makes a level of sense. Because you're spending prestige to declare wars, if you were gaining prestige per battle, um, that would actually be uh, fairly counterintuitive because it's basically saying the more you battle in a war, the more wars you can declare, which isn't really what the game wants to encourage because this game wants you to slow down a little bit. It wants you to gain, you know, your. it wants you to go through your lifestyle traits. It wants you to go through all of that sort of stuff, right? It doesn't really want you to just be blobbing non-stop and expanding. Now, obviously, looking at the screen, that seems a little bit ridiculous because we have done that. But anyway, the game doesn't want you to do that. So they moved it from uh, you gaining prestige per battle to you gaining fame per battle. Because fame doesn't actually give you any ability to declare more wars immediately. Because you can't use fame to declare a war, right? So that's the difference in the systems between 2 and 3 that I was missing. But uh, anyway, that's enough about that. The other comment that I got, which was nice, was to asking me why I really didn't want to create kingdoms, and there was a couple of different reasons for it. When we were gaining prestige to change our succession law, um, we were deciding between creating duchies and kingdoms, and the reason why I went for duchies instead of kingdoms is that the gold per prestige um, like com uh, conversion rate was much higher for duchies. Let's have a look here. So, if we were to create the Duchy of Mercia, you see it costs us 250 gold, but it gives us 300 prestige. So that's us getting an extra 50 prestige on the gold that we're spending, right? But, if we were to create the, king uh, the Kingdom of Frisia, you'll see that it costs us 500, but we're only getting 400 prestige, which really isn't that much. I mean, like, what, we, what we're getting... So for 250 more gold, we're getting 100 more prestige. That's really not a great deal. So that's one of the reasons I didn't want to create kingdoms. The other reason is once you create a kingdom, you're kind of stuck with it, right? Um, you can't do any weird uh, tricks with it in order to uh, do some interesting vassal management. You just have a king or a queen and you have to deal with them. Let me show you uh, this in action. If we have a look at our dangerous faction here, you'll see that we have two kings. There's absolutely nothing we can do about them. They're just going to be in the faction. Now, they both like us, so we can't make them like us that much more. I mean, we could spend some money on it, but it's just... It's not really guaranteed to do anything. The only real way that I know of, of getting them out of the faction, is to get a hook on them. But we don't have any hooks that we can get on them currently, so they're just kind of problems. These guys, on the other hand, are less problems, because what we can do with them is, if we wanted to, we could create another kingdom above them, and just shunt these guys into that kingdom. At which point, they're no longer in the faction, and we no longer have to worry about them. So that was one of my other reasons for it. Now, given that I've just described it, uh, let's see whether it's worthwhile doing that. Uh, how much do we need here? So we need to get them down 17% so the faction doesn't fire. You provide 19.7% um, power. So if we were to get this person out of the faction, we would be good to go. Now, what's your kingdom? The problem is his kingdom might be fairly large. 
Kingdom of Germany is not as large as I thought it was going to be. It's still fairly large, so it's going to be a powerful vassal if I did it, but yeah, we, we could maybe manage that. How about you? Where are you? You are part of the Kingdom of Italy down here. Now, we could create the Kingdom of Italy. Kingdom of Italy is going to be weaker within our realm because we have less people in it. And um, what we could potentially do is we could make um, the Duke of Lombard the King of it Italy. And he's already fairly um, powerful. Like, he already holds pretty much all the land. So that could work out pretty well. How much is that? That's 11%. So if we were going to get him out of the faction, we would also have to get the last one out of the faction as well. Ah, you're in the Kingdom of Italy, I assume. You're not. You're actually in the Anointed Kingdom of uh, Romagna. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Uh, we could put you underneath Italy. You're close enough. Right. Because we're probably not going to get the land off of the Pope. So let's go in here. Create ourselves the Kingdom of Italy. Just double checking we weren't creating uh, like the next level up there. Right. Kingdom of Italy. Create. I'm then going to find this guy. And uh, I'm going to say, hey, you. You are now the King of Italy. Three vassals get transferred. Great. And then I'm going to say, hey, you. You can also have that vassal. He really, really likes us. He's also 13, so isn't able to join factions. And if we have a look here, we have now weakened that military faction so that it is no longer going to immediately fire. What I'm hoping will happen is now the faction isn't going to fire. It's going to make it so that this guy possibly leaves, this one might leave, and then the faction just disappears. And if we can hold on for a couple of years, things are going to look better. Sort of. The problem is that opinion of predecessor is really high, right? Our short reign penalty goes down, I think it's one a year. But our opinion of predecessor is going down 4.93 per year. So it gives us more time to fix our issues. But like the fact that this is dropping so quickly probably means we're going to have a lot of vassals in like two to three years who are wanting to rise up against us. So yeah, not great. But if we can fix our issues and get more troops before then, that will solve the issue. Anyway, what have we got in here? We can declare wars. I don't know if we're ready for that yet. Children need guardians, uh, so Canaan needs a guardian. Canaan, uh, let's see here, find, oh, let's find spouse, oops, <laughs> uh, find guardian. Uh, what are you doing? You're doing an intrigue education. That's fine. Um, you seem like you would be fine. Maybe a genius is going to be better. Yeah, let's go with, do you have a genius with an intrigue education? Uh, we have you. I don't know whether you're better than you. I don't know which one is actually better in terms of numbers. I know that genius is better than quick, but is the does the education matching matter? It probably does. Let's go with you. Right. Cool. So we'll get you educated. Anna. Anna, you're going for another intrigue education. Uh, and a completely unscientific test that I will never check. I'm going to get the... Um... Oh, wait. You're a genius who's got the trait. Did I just completely miss you previously? Yeah, I was going to say I'll get this person to do the education. Somebody who's a genius but doesn't have the right education trait, but who knows. Um, yeah, sure. Well, I'll go for you anyway, and then we can do our test. So you're currently being educated by this person. Trait, quickness, um, and then your sister is being educated by the person who's got a genius and no trait. So, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, it probably won't make a difference either way, because I probably won't care about either of those characters, but it's uh, fun to think that I'll go back to it. Right, clear those up. Um, we're 61 years old. This is a problem. We're probably going to die soon. So we need to leave the realm in a good condition for Radolf. Now, one of our problems is that we're not earning enough money, and we can't do what we did last time, because if I go into Modify Feudal Contract, you'll see that his obligations have already been changed. You can only do this to a character once per their lifetime. Not once per your lifetime, once per their lifetime. So until this um, you know, group of characters starts dying off, we can't actually do anything about this. So that's a minor problem for us. Um, how much, what are we spending our money on? Court amenities, 50 gold. That's a pretty bad amount that we're spending on that. Is there anything that we can do 
to not spend that much on court amenities. Are we still expected to be level 10? We are. Okay. I could lower the amount that we're spending. But that puts us below level 10. What's actually the penalty for not having enough grandeur? We're at that right now. A negative prestige per month? I think we might take that, to be honest. I think that seems about right. Now, this one actually gives us prestige per month, which is kind of funny that we'd be getting a negative while also paying for a positive. Um, is there any of these that I can get rid of? Uh, what's this one get us? People are more likely to stay. Court grandeur bonus. That's on all of them. Guest acceptance to join your schemes in court as an agent. Um, yeah, I don't think we really need this. I think we can drop that down to a three, which saves us seven gold a month. If I go down any further, it actually drops us directly to nine. That's okay. We're not losing anything else. Being at nine grandeur is fine for us. And that saves us ten gold a month. I think we apply that, yeah. Yes, we'll, we'll take that. So now we're only losing 0 0.1 gold a month. That's that, that's workable. We can do something with that. Uh, we do have unraised men at arms, but they're all basically fit. Like you know, they're all fully recharged. So there's nothing we can do there. Uh, is our church person paying us money? He is. All right then. So basically, we just need to increase either domain or vassal taxes. Um, can I increase my domain taxes? Let's see. What have I got in here? Um, I could make one of these, if any of these get me money. They don't. Well, no, ra Royal Reserves would get me money down there. Cost me 375 and we get 0 0.8 per month. I'm doing quick uh, maths on that, and I can tell that that's not going to pay itself off very quickly. How about here? Are any of these going to get me anything? Like if I upgrade the trade port, it gets a 0 0.2 for 330. That's much worse. I guess it's 0 0.2 for 412. <laughs> it's getting worse. That's 0 0.2 for 275. I still think that's not that good. Lubeck. That's 0 0.2 for 281. That's not any money. Um, 0 0.2 for 281. Uh, I actually now kind of think the 0 0.8 for um, 375 is not that bad. <laughs> I can't create it because I don't hold the duchy. Well, it doesn't matter what I feel about it, does it? If I can't create it. Um, if I upgrade the castle. I, I can't upgrade the castle because I don't have hoardings. Um, do any of the cultures that we can merge with have uh, um, any of that? So if I was to merge with you, do you have hoardings? No. Franconian was one that we're near to getting, wasn't it? Yeah, like... Do you have hoardings? No, you also don't. It'd be nice if you could see a list of cultures and their tech. That would be really useful. I don't know if there's somewhere in the game where that is, but that, that would be uh, useful. It probably isn't in the game because it wasn't something that was useful before this patch. I'm just seeing, like, you don't have hoardings. You don't have hoardings. I can do this. Oh, there we go. The Dutch have hoardings. Look at that. So this would allow us to get that. Okay. We we could uh, we could become the uh, Scots Gaelic uh, st oh, sorry Scots Gaelic um, I think I've said it wrong both times anyway we could become um, the Dutch yeah we could become Dutch that's fine content is more common I don't know if we need that one anything else more money on the coast city holdings give more taxes development and levies. Uh, signif significant uh, city holding significantly lowers control gain. And what's this? Polders. This tradition allows a culture to unlock the adapted militia innovation in the late medieval era. Oh, that's nice. That's kind of unique. Uh, the pastoral lands, farms and fields, wetland farms, manor houses and orchard line buildings have additional bonuses. And bonus to construction speed of coastal holdings. Ooh, let's go and see if we can find out what these bonuses are. So, uh, this one I think it was, right? So that's two t 0 0.2 tax, 1% levy, 1% holding, 50 levies. So if I have a look at ours, yes, yeah, the percentage stuff that's different, right? 
Yeah, so it's those two 1% on that one. I got to the right one again? No. Uh, where are we? You're, you don't have the culture. I've lost the one that we looked at previously. There we go. So yeah, those two 1% um, we would get. So we get 1% holding tax, 1% levy size. That's not huge. I assume that the others have similar bonuses. Like, I think this one's actually one. Holding taxes, yeah, 2% there as well. Okay. That's something we could definitely do. And getting a unique uh, innovation later would be nice. Um, does being Dutch do anything for us? I suspect the answer is absolutely not. Well, we would have the Dutch language, potentially, if we wanted it. Um, yeah, it really doesn't do much beyond getting us the tech. But... No, that's, that's something we could do. Let's have a look. Any others uh, seem good? Um, yeah, any others have ho hoardings? Nope. 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 They're, they're well ahead of uh, time on that one. We're up here. Not Norwegian doesn't have any. You're, you're not even in this. You're still in tribal innovations. Anglo-Saxon has hoardings. Okay. Wait, does Welsh Anglo-Saxon? No. Okay, so it would have to be Anglo-Saxon if we were doing it. Which we're not quite there yet on, but three years we would get it. We get wetlanders. Wetland farm buildings have additional benefits. I think I'm gonna be I think I'm gonna merge with the Dutch. Yeah. Um I was gonna save it for getting like, you know, some that vassalization stuff, but it really doesn't matter anymore because this current character is not going to do any. So yeah, um, let's do our 50 year one and, and form a hybrid culture. So, uh, Batavo has got uh, Gaelic? Mm, no. Wait, was that, which culture am I fusing with? I thought I was fusing with the Dutch. I am, okay. For some reason, I, I don't I know much, I'll admit, I don't know much about uh, why that would be the name for the Dutch culture, but okay. We're actually going to be Dutch, Scots, Gaelic, because I, I think that's quite funny to just keep going. Um, Wait, do you want to be the Dutch Gales? Um, we could be. Yeah, sure. Why not? We'll be that. Although, actually, no. I'll just be. I'll just be the Gales. That fits better with the uh, name of the series, anyway. Right. Uh, we're gonna have Godelic heritage because we want to have that heritage for um, that decision that we want to get. We're gonna have Godelic as our language as I speak it, rather than Dutch. Traditions. So, um, what do we? So we currently have. Or we lo we're losing strong kinship there. Are there any that I want to get rid of? Probably don't need co um, coastal advantage. Yeah, that's not useful anymore. I'll take strong kinship. I also want Highland Warriors still. I don't really want the content trait. I'm going to take that away and take Highland Warriors. So let's see what we got here. Highland Warriors, which we know about. Strong kinship, which is good for making your family like you. And it allows you to unlock things in the late medieval era. Same with this one. Uh, city holdings give more stuff. Nice. Uh, hill dwellers gets us bonuses in, for hill buildings. Trade port buildings can be constructed one era earlier. And cultural acceptance gain plus 50%. We could maybe get rid of it, but actually I like having a um, different culture opinion going up and no negative opinion of other cultures. That's good. Aesthetics. Um... Well, Continental Europe seems good there. We could uh, switch our names so that we have both. So we have Gaelic and Scottish and Dutch. Uh, that's just funny. Just go completely into it. Uh, so we can go for Holy Roman Imperial or Northern U uh, European and Continental European. We'll go for both. And of course, yes, we'll go for both coats of arms. So it's a color for our new culture. Uh, it's going to be yellow. Roughly the same as the current culture's color. Because then I'll remember which one it is. 
There we go, that's roughly the same. Can I use like a color picker? Absolutely not. Okay, cool. Done. I need a... Uh, must pick pillars from both cultures, not counting shared pillars. Wait, did I not? Oh, right. Okay. Um, so I would have to speak Dutch if I was doing it. Uh, don't really want to. Oh, are we actually at the point where I'm like, I don't know about that. Yeah, I guess because the first time we few, uh, we made a hybrid one, uh, Godelic was the same for both of them, right? Or was it? Or was the language the same? I can't remember. Anyway, we, I think we must have had something that was the same. Oh, we probably Ethos I chose from the other one, right? Ah, so our Ethoses are the same, so that's not going to allow us to do it. I don't want to switch from that. Do I want to switch our language? Hmm... It doesn't matter too much. The problem is, yeah, the cultural acceptance baseline of cultures sharing this language. Nobody shares Dutch. And nobody. We have some that share Godelic. Huh. But I really want the innovations. Do we speak Dutch just to get them? I mean, we don't even speak the language of the culture we're going to be. Hmm. But hoardings? I think we're going to speak Dutch. We might get it just because we are the culture. Yeah, I think we might get it because we are the culture. Let, let's be Dutch. Sure. Eight out of eight vassals will convert to the new one, including Ireland. So Ireland are going to speak Dutch as well. Okay. Sure. Let's go with that. Spurred on by positive relations and increased cultural exchange, the Scots, Gaelic, and Dutch people have grown increasingly close over the years. Now individuals from these societies have begun to view themselves not as one or the other, but as both simultaneously. A new Dutch, Scots, Gaelic culture. The Scots, Scot uh, the Scots, Gaelic traditions and values form the backbone of this new culture, while various Dutch attributes have been adapted and integrated to meet the needs of their new society. With the Dutch stop, uh, Scots Gaelic people now looking to me for guidance, it's time to set the stage for our shared future. Alright, so that gives us all of these, which is nice. But it also um, means that in our capital here, hey, we're now making zero. Yeah, yeah, we're now making a tiny, tiny bit more. <laughs> so we're no longer losing money. So all of that just to be like, and now we're breaking even. Okay. Cool. Um, now, because I have hoardings, I can actually upgrade my capital, which is going to give me more taxes per month, so we'll be making a positive of 0 0.3, but it's also going to give me more levies, which means that factions are going to be less strong against me, which seems good. Let's upgrade that. Right. And then we'll unpause, because I feel like we have to. Cultural fascination is now the knighthood innovation. Oh, okay, that's fine. Um, we'll get myself some prestige. Right, a uh, knighthood innovate. It's just because I was, I think I was working on one of the ones that we just got. Um, is knighthood okay? Knight effectiveness and direct vassal opinion? That's not bad. Um, I could take that. I could be happy with that one. How long till we can do this one? We need two more. Okay. Uh, let's go for knighthood. I think that's fine. Um, I am falling into the trap that uh, apparently most people do in games and like in generally in life. If you already have something as you're like, if somebody says this is the option that's already selected, would you like to change? Most people tend to favor the option, the first option, like more favorably, like the one that involves less change. Apparently, from what I heard, that may be completely wrong, but hey, there you go. My son has a level three intricate web weaver um thing. Okay. And I gained learning lifestyle experience because my spouse aided me in my studies. How long to my daughter? Three years. Okay. We can marry uh, Kanan. Off to somebody. What's he got? Um, okay, he's got a uh, genius. So we're going to marry him off to... I don't know. Um, if we got another genius, we get guaranteed genius passed down. Yeah, we're going to marry you to this person for guaranteed genius. Now let's go with that. Right. And now we just unpause. We are slowly not losing as much money as we were. It's fine. My daughter's going to go to whatever thing you want her to go to. 
What's this? Ooh, Dynasty Legacy. We can get the final one here. Celebrate other cultures' decision. Allows you to improve development, control, uh, building costs, and defensive advantage in counties from other cultures with a cultural acceptance of 75% or more. Taking this decision will also increase your prestige and levies. All counties in the realm are affected. Gold cost scales with the number of affected counties. Uh, this is going to be quite expensive then, I'd imagine. But also, we finished the entire line. Hey, cool. I don't usually do that in campaigns. Right. Um, find Godelic Lingui Linguist? Recruit someone to teach you your court language? Wait, we forgot how to speak Godelic? No, we speak Godelic in Dutch. Why would I need to find somebody to speak more, to teach me my court language? I already speak my court language. Okay, sure. I guess it's because I changed my culture language so it doesn't know that I have another language. That's kind of weird. Anyway, uh, mass eviction? Send your guest packing? Is that because I have too many guests? Oh, it's because I have a low uh, number of... It's because my lodging standard is low. I can send people away. <laughs> okay. Um, where is the one I'm looking for here? Celebrate other cultures. Oh, well, that's not bad. It only costs you 380. Okay, when it said it scaled, I was thinking it'd be much worse. So we get monthly prestige and vassal levy contribution. Every Scott Scalic culture gets um, building construction down, building a uh, defender advantage up, development growth and control growth, and every Dutch county gets the same? Gets the same. Okay. That's kind of cool. Yeah, we might do that. Getting extra uh, vassal levy contribution would be nice. Right. Oh, we can imprison criminals? Anyone in automatic? The king of Italy is a witch? If you say so, he has no money, so I don't really want to imprison him. The only reason I'd want to imprison him is to take away his title. Now, we could imprison him and take away his title. And then what we would do is we would give it to somebody who is of my, uh, who is of my culture so that we can get closer to getting this um, have everybody be your culture thing for Reclaim Britannia. Although, really, I would argue that this should only be powerful vassals in Britannia, or, like, vassals in Britannia, because otherwise it becomes a bit difficult to get if you're later on, but, hey, whatever. So we have Francon. Uh, can I see this in an easier way? Is that, uh, does it say it here? No. Does it say it if I hover it? Uh, yes. Okay. Franconian. Uh, Cecil Pine. Saxon. Saxon's not one that's uh, it's Central Germanic. Okay, that's kind of what I thought. You're Scots, so you'll be fine, I think. No, you're West Germanic. You're also not fine. Okay. And then Swabia, which is um, Saxon, which is also not fine. Okay, so we need to somehow get all of those vassals to be our culture. Huh. How are we going to do that? I guess what we would do, yeah, I guess starting with the King of Italy and revoking his titles makes sense. We could raise crown authority. That would at least give uh, factions another thing to target as well. Let's raise crown authority. Okay. Then I'm going to imprison the King of Italy. He's going to raise up in rebellion. Do we have other vassals who are disgruntled? Uh, would they all join it? I think they would. And our chance of imprisonment isn't high enough. Is there anything I can do to make it higher? Court grandeur increases success chance of imprisonment. Oh, that's cool. Um, his intrigue is low. His opinion of me is high, which gives us a plus 50. Um, let's have a look here at um, this. I'm sure one of these gives you increased chance to imprison. I could be thinking of Crusader Kings too, to be fair. I believe I might be. Unless, is it one of these ones? Uh, I think it, I'm thinking of Crusader Kings too. Yup. Uh, that's fine. Okay, unless it's in there somewhere. Uh, okay, so we've got nothing that would increase chance of imprisonment. I actually kind of thought it might be the uh, Spymaster guy. I'm not seeing it. Maybe I'm just not reading it somewhere. Yeah, okay. Mm, okay, so if we're not able to imprison him, are we able to scheme to abduct him? No. Uh, the reason why I was checking was because I was thinking that in um, 
Yeah, I was thinking that previous character we did that, but I would need to go in here and get one of these ones, right? Kidnapper. Yeah, it's a little bit more to invest to actually get that. Okay. Um, Does it tell me who would rise up with them? That would be useful if it did. It's not net desperate that we do it. So that's the war view of the rebellion cast a spell. It just says, um, like, other disgruntled vassals. So I guess by disgruntled, it's other vassals who are in the factions. Hmm. Okay, we'll, we'll even be. That was an option that we could look for, but I'm not too worried about getting that. I suspect this character is nowhere near getting um, that decision done because this character has got a very short lifespan. Anyway, I'll unpause and let it go a little bit. Uh, faction is now dangerous again. More people joined it. Why? Who knows? I mean, they have 74 opinion of me. Apparently, they just felt like it. I did just raise the crown authority, I suppose. That's probably a reason. Uh, I could create whales. And that would get this guy out, which is 25% uh, off of it. Yeah. Uh, can I actually create whales? No, I need more money. Okay. Court grandeur is now at level 9. Alright. Well, child of my dynasty. It's fine. We'll just uh, chill here. There's not a lot I can do against this faction, to be fair. Um, anybody else I could get out of it? No. To see if we have anybody else. You're also in Wales, so that wouldn't have really fixed our issue. I could add you to Norway, which would give me an extra 13% off this. Norway is in the faction, however. Hmm. Uh, you're a duke, somehow. Yeah, if you weren't a duke, I could stick you underneath them. But that wouldn't really help. Hmm. I don't know how we're going to win this battle. I suspect um, carefully is the answer. Cultural emissary position is vacated, which has saved us some money. I'll send um, my daughter off to places. Factions are created against us. Scheme at court. Somebody is scheming. Okay. Can imprison criminals. Uh, it's fine. Don't need to do that. We have another faction. Which other people have joined. Okay, so this is to put this person on charge of the Holy Roman uh, throne. Well, that's not great. One's going to fire in two months' time. Okay. Is there anything I can do to make it not fire? Demand artifact. Um, you would like to become the owner of the beautiful ragdoll. Alright. Sure. I don't care. <laughs> we weren't using it anyway. Uh, but that might mean that he leaves the faction. Potentially. I don't know. He hasn't left it yet. What's here? Oh, it's to say my court grandeur is too low. Okay. Not a lot I can do about that. Um, We got some more uh, garrison size. Have I got max uh, size of army that I can get? Yes, I do. Okay. Um... Well, I'm not going to give you independence. Are you stupid? I will not be threatened. Okay. So, people have joined the war. Um, I suppose I could have checked whether I could get an alliance with my daughter. Not an alliance with my daughter, but an alliance from my daughter. Yeah, with the Empire of Francia. That seems like a good one. Cool. We now have an alliance with Emperor Robin, uh, who has 4,900 troops. Now, he is in his own wars of hell, but that's okay. We can maybe... Do something with that. Right. Um, I'm going to call in my ally to my war. Right. Uh, let's win the war, shall we? So who's in charge? You're technically in charge. Let's start with you then. For no particular reason other than we can. Uh, so over here. Chuck that down. Raise all of our troops. They're fighting us while our troops are raising. We win anyway. That's nice. I'll accept your call to war. Why not? Um, spouse can get somebody else to leave a faction. Sure. Yeah, force them out of the faction. White peace. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's the other war. That's the war that our ally was in. Okay. So we weaken this one slightly. It's going to fire soon. All right, move in here. Start sieging. Hopefully we capture someone. That'd be nice. Uh, I will not be threatened. Definitely not. Right. 
Um, did we capture anyone? Also, why do I not have a commander on this army? Also, can I raise any more troops? No. Okay. Uh, I've lost a lot of troops there. Right. Um, where are we? Here. Let's get level of devotion impact up. Which is going to give us more Catholic clergy opinion. I don't even know if that's going to be that useful. Chancellor is going to be you. Okay. Call in our ally, Emperor Robin. Of course I will call in Robin. Do we have anybody else who we can get an alliance off of? Like if I marry off my grandson, can I get an alliance? Uh, oh, he's not in my court. Well, that'd be a real problem then. Um, you're all married, I'm guessing? Unmarried. All right, my sister. Um, yeah, please come to my court. Yes, cool. Right. Um, how far away are we from White Peace? Seventeen. That's not bad, actually. Let's just let's push for White Peace. How far away are we now from White Peace? Nine. Yeah, yeah, we could get this. She's arrived at our court. All right, I'm going to find you somebody to marry for an alliance. There is nobody who would marry. Okay, that's fine. Four months left. Um, go for it. And that's all we can really do is try and siege. Um, moved by my tribulations, Duke Heinrich has offered me his counsel and aid on many occasions, hoping to alleviate the burden of my duties. Um, I can get a weak hook on someone and get a rival. Say, can the three of us not find common ground? I'll take your warnings, or I can get them to fight each other. Uh, let's just try and make them like each other and me. Yeah. I failed to reconcile the two vassals. Well, that's not great. Siege this down. 55 days left. We're getting there. Lots of sieges going. There's some adultery going on. Nice. Nice. 31%, you will white peace. Let's go. So be it. Okay. Um, this person has a map of my territory. Uh, let's just get more vigilance. We get intrigue and hostile scheme resistance. You have 30,000 versus my 22,000. Okay, well, at least I can raise some more troops now. Uh, because I now have more troops. Because my other vassals now count again, I believe. Um, I'm actually going to split you again. Um, then I'm going to split you. Let's just grab them all and do this. So select, deselect, select, uh, go there, there, and there. Cool. So we should be able to get some supply up now. That one is now, that one now exists. Nice. What have we got here? Powerful vassal expects council position. Then you shouldn't have declared a war against me. Okay. Um, how's our supply looking? 97%. So what's this war? Otto's claim on the Holy Roman Empire. Who's Otto? Can we kill you? No. Okay. You always check the easy one first, right? Can you kill the person uh, who the war is about? Okay. Who am I hostile to? Wait, I'm hostile to, oh, they're just in the war. Okay, that's fine, doesn't matter. Austria, and then like you over here. So I kind of want to just chuck my troops in there and see what happens. Yeah, I'm kind of in that mindset. Court gesture, several fooled in one coat. Hmm, I don't remember my perceptive gesture being this girthy. My lord, excuse ye, you see, you've had a bit too much to eat, and it would seem my stomach does not agree with me, Inwar says, a pained look in his face. Fart. Suddenly, Inwar's colourful coat bursts open, uncovering a goose, and another one, and another one, and another one, and another one, and another one. Okay. That's a lot of geese. Right. Enemy left war. Love it. Bet he left war probably because somebody else is about to join war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can come into my... Uh, into my court here. Yeah. Um, he tried to speak Dutch to us and fails, but that's okay. Head round here. Clear those up. Right. There we go. Merge up our 15,000 troops. Make sure the leader we have is good. 
Uh, yeah, I think I'll go with this one. 15,000. I'm doing base. I'm doing counting. 10,000. Okay, that's not enough. Okay. Do I think I could win anyway? Not really. Oh, opponent has recently disembarked as well. Let's see if we can get rid of the recently disembarked penalty before we go in. They are starting to surround us. What if I go down here? Okay. What are we missing? We're missing a steward. Uh, you can be my steward. You're okay for just now. Uh, dagger has low durability. Honestly, like the least important thing at this moment in time. Uh, what I might do, I think I can maybe grab myself a... Yeah, I maybe grab myself a mercenary army. That might help. Um, what's the... Uh, I don't care. Just stop, stop telling me about that one. Uh, Pope, can you give me money? Not until August. Can I survive until August? Uh, uh, I don't know. Probably not would be my guess. Oh, I've got more troops to raise? Okay. Let's raise them up. Anyone we got. They're coming to fight. Things will be even. Okay, um... What's the lar what's the largest one we got? Red Shanks? Norwegian band of Hjaltland? Um What's the land that we're fighting in? Hills. These guys take a negative in hills. Okay, so probably not them. Anyone gain a bonus in hills? You take a negative in hills. I don't think any of these are gonna gain a bonus in hills. Um I think we we'll probably buy these guy. Oh, we can't. Okay. What's the chief? What's the one that we can buy? We're going down quite a long way in the list. All right, so we could buy these guys. Bowmen gain an advantage in hills. Yeah, we'll hire them. Birch. I got more that I can raise. Okay. I'm willing to take this fight. I don't think we're going to win, but I'm willing to take it. I don't need the supply duration. Let's see. Is my uh, ally going to help, or is he going to walk away? He is so walking away. There we go. Now he's helping. Now he's doing nothing. Now he's helping. Now he's too late, and now we've lost. <laughs> what was that? Okay, yeah. Right, we'd lost either way, but I, I thought I'd try it, you know? Now, we could just give up this war. That's an option that we have available to us, is just to say, doesn't matter. Otto can have the Holy Roman Empire if Otto wants the Holy Roman Empire. Um, hmm, I could imprison Otto. He's still my vassal. Imprison him. 58%. Uh, I can make this person pay me more. Should you be paying me more? I'm at war with her. Yeah, pay me more. I got Otto. Right. I'm I'm really sorry, Otto. It, this is an act of tyranny. People are going to be well hacked off. We beheaded Otto. Wait, it's a new Cassus Belly? What's the Cassus Belly? War against the tyranny. What happens if you enforce it? No, sorry. What happens if I surrender? I'm deposed. And then my son takes over? Don't threaten me with a good time. Yeah. I'm out. Peace. Right. Emperor Radolf ascends to the throne. Um, renowned for his interest in metaphysical matters, he might be ill-equipped to deal with the everyday problems of secular rule. Okay, he is however not going to die anytime soon. And everybody I assume can't join a faction against him. We lost Lubeck to our brother. So we have one title now. But we did it. He managed three years. We are now Emperor... Radolf, who is a genius, a theologian, a herbalist, and an insightful thinker. I'm sure all of those will be helpful to him. Let's disband our troops. Factions should be thinking about going. Liberty faction, if it rises up, we can just say, yep, okay, I'll lower the, uh, the, uh, the crown authority. 
yeah, I think we're okay. I think we are okay. We survived, and we became the character we always wanted to be. So, thank you for watching. I'm going to end the episode there, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.